Hi, welcome on this video. My name is Davey. In this video, I want to talk about something that I saw in some code bases and I was asking the user, the, the, the software engineer in, in, in the team, like, why did you write the code in this way? Here, we're talking about the callback hell. If you never heard about it, Google it. It's funny. It's going to tell you why people use things like promises, async await, and why you should actually name your functions, okay? So this is going to be quite an interesting ride. Stay with me and let's go. So imagine that you have a function called get coefficient, right? The, 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 the main idea there is it should just, it's going to be like an, a, an, an API call and that will get some, uh, an API call to get some data uh, from somewhere, right? And the the main idea there is like when it, it comes back, you get you're going to have um, we're gonna have here something like cost value, give it a value of twelve, and then we we'll return twelve. We we'll return that value, right? So let's just make it really simple here. Stay with me. So the the the, the thing we're trying to do here is to say we're going to start from the idea of you make you you have a number like a value here, and you call the function get coefficient and you know that when you you call that function right away you should see uh, the value 12 right that's literally instantaneous right if you were to make an a, a call to an api well what what do you think is going to happen to the value right there right so Hopefully you know the, the answer. If you don't know the answer, I'm going to simulate that right away and you're going to see why uh, um, these, instead of returning 12, will return undefined. That's the answer. So let's simulate an API call. What we're going to do is to just to have a set uh, timeout here, give it a second, and then here, instead of doing it this way, we're going to say, okay, the, we start with nothing right here and then at some point after a second that value is going to be 12 got it so what you see right here is basically you making a call to an api and then whenever the value uh, uh, is back you assigned uh, that value to the result of the call right now you can see indeed that on line 9 it says undefined but what happened what happened? Why JavaScript didn't uh, assign me this value to 12? Well, long story short, long explanation short here, JavaScript is monotreaded. And when you have a set timeout, it will just put that uh, 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 call. That, uh, uh, the, the, so basically, when you call set timeout here, you're passing a function, right? You, you, you're passing a function right there. And that function will be put into like a queue and then every other operation before uh, that are already lined up will execute and then your operation uh, will will execute right there which means that we, even when you say one second here it's not guarantee that is going to be one second so you got to be mindful of that now how did people solve that in the past how did we approach like uh, solving this thing in the past and make sure that if the, the call here is asynchronous, you still have the benefit of that to, get to catch that value at the moment it comes back a second or two second later. So the way it was done in the past, and that's the moment we talk about callbacks, is people used to actually add a callback. And you're going to see right away why it's called callback hell. A callback. A callback, it's basically a function. We're going to give it uh, a function like that. Okay, we're using TypeScript here and we, we can actually say a uh, function this way. So uh, now that callback means that whenever the set timeout is done, we can call the callback. And in our case, let's pass the value. Right. So in that case here, we're just going to say it's going to take a value, which is a number. And we're going to make sure that we don't really care about what it returns right here. So now you can then have a function that is called back here that's going to take a value of a number and then you can do things here like console log that value, right?
So if if we did it well, so let's go back all the way here. We call that callback right there, and we're going to pass it right here, callback. So if we did that entire uh, operation well, basically the uh, uh, the mo at the moment that value is being uh, released here is going to be available right there. Okay, so I'm going to test that in the browser so that you actually see what happened. And because I'm going to use a browser, I'm going to remove the TypeScript um, uh, notation right here for now quickly. And then we should be able to run that in the browser. Yeah, the browser doesn't understand uh, TypeScript. Okay, so let's open our code here so we can see indeed that right here it should display 12 after uh, a, a, a second right so that's the callback right here so when I execute that we see boom this is 12 that is being uh, uh, executed there and if we just go with get coefficient the function there you're going to see that um, it will just obviously crash here because we don't have um, we don't have a callback but without that callback, we will have seen that it will just show it, it it will show 12, but the 12 will have been assigned by the time the function is is, is passed, right? So that's the, uh, the idea. But then what happened? So let me bring back TypeScript here because TypeScript is beautiful, and you should try TypeScript. You should actually check the link in comment if you want to. Uh, master TypeScript. It's, we have we have a beautiful course that we're building on the Hackages Lab. So, right now, from from that point on, you start thinking, okay, uh, why is it called a callback? It's called a callback because at some point within that callback, uh, okay, let me rephrase that. It's called a callback hell because at some point within that callback, that initial callback. Another asynchronous operation here uh, could happen, API call, which means that you get another set timeout, and we're going to leverage our snippet here, and we say, okay, after one second, we want to do something with that value. So let's say val is equal now uh, val time uh, two, right? But then you want to make sure that, let's say, uh, let result we just start like that and we're gonna say result here right now we have signed it and then we return a result uh, here and you see right away that uh, well this is not gonna work really well because once again we have uh, that call that is being made here and the value of result will never be uh, twice the uh, uh, the value of uh, the, the, the val that we got right there, right? So, um, uh, when people start doing that, they say, okay, let's just have another callback here. Call back, I'm just going to say uh, callback function here. And then this one, another function, right? And because it's another function, you could then come here and say, we're just going to pass that callback here and then pass the result this way and so on so forth you start having code that looked basically like this right and th that was a pattern like heavily used in the node.js uh, ecosystem where you have a function that takes a, a parameter here but then it takes a function here which is a callback and then inside you have the forage which takes a callback and within that um, uh, 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 a function here you have another callback and then and you see it just keep on going callback after callback there, there was actually let me uh, allow me to go on uh, on on google and find um uh, callback hell uh, and there were quite some uh, amazing image like this one that you could find on uh, on the internet where basically you have a uh, the callback that just go all the way to the right and you have this can happening right there okay i tried I, yeah that's a hold i am because i was part of that era that played that that video game and uh you can see right on the right how that that um uh, uh callback hell uh, 
uh, start looking like basically the way code uh, was, was looking like. So now let's go ahead and move on to one more step to how do we go from call, call back hell to what's the next step? Promises. So the idea there is like, let's, let's first remove the, the, the second callback. Now we understand the, the main idea. We're just going to remove that and then, uh, let's just clean up, um, over there and keep it as simple as console log and we pass that value. Okay. So, so the next step here is promises. So at some point to say, okay, instead of having a callback, right, we going to use, uh, this idea of promises, right? So what is a promise? A promise is just like the word says, I promise I'm going to return you something. Promise. Even if there is an error, I will still return you something, but I promise that at some point I'll return you that. So that gave a different API for users. So the way you will do that is to say every single operation that has, that was asynchronous, you just need to wrap it into a new promise. So let's go here and say const promise and say new promise here. And now with that, the promise takes a function. And then in that function, there is a resolve uh, argument here that you pass. And now here we just need to add uh, that operation. We need to pass it right here. Okay. So with that, we can then say, instead of returning the value, we just return the promise, All right? Now, once we've done that, the value here, to be able to consume it, we just have to then call the resolve with that value, All right? That's basically it. And then from that point on, when you consume it, you can remove the call back here because it won't be needed. When you consume it, you can now leverage the then API, pass your console log, and then we can, you can actually pass as many console logs as you want. Um, and uh, if there is an error, you have a catch error here, you could pass it that way. And then uh, there is also the finally that you could use to uh, make sure that um, you clean up anything after it doesn't matter if it was a, a den or a, a catch you you return that and by the way i'm i, I want to keep that video really short here but one thing you got to know is the the first function that i pass here is the equivalent of the success when something uh, successful happen and you can pass a second one which is the error uh, in, in that case right so there is a success and error but uh, it, it's actually way more visible here when, for example, in that function, if something breaks and you don't and, and you have an error uh, on the second one, it will bubble to this part of, of the thing. And if there is no error here to clean uh, um, what happened here, it will just go right there. I'm going to make another video, a short video where I explain that showing you visually what happened. But that's not the video for today. Okay, so you gotta you gotta subscribe or just be part of the the hackages community, and whenever that video is is available, you just get it. So that's it. Now from here, you can now see that. Well, if you wanna access that coefficient, you um, indeed have to use that uh, 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 then then or or catch or whatever. Okay, so we're one step closer to async await. Because at some point, people start thinking, well, if I want that coefficient, they start dealing with the then, then that, that syntax looked quite odd for a lot of people. My background is in functional programming. When I see this, it speaks volume to me, right? I, I, I can, I can live with this flow of data because I'm, I know that I'm, I'm, I just, I, I'm dealing with the pipe of data coming from the top, from the top, uh, top down and I can, uh, manage uh, each den is basically a transformation operation that I can use in the flow of data. Okay, but in the JavaScript world, that's a foreign language that I was speaking right there. So, for example, if if you had uh, 
this entire uh, operation here uh, let's say function calculate and you you knew that you had um let's say uh, cal calculate total let's just to give it a, a better name here you can then say okay we're gonna have a, a function that will get the coefficient and based on that coefficient right cost coefficient I'm just gonna call it this way based on that you want to say for example uh, 1200 time the coefficient right so but right away you could see that this is not gonna work right it's not working because that coefficient is a promise promise that something's gonna come your way but nothing comes right so what uh, uh, you you end up doing is to say okay in the then you will go ahead there and say you, you uh, whenever you receive something uh, from it right so whatever whatever data you're gonna you're going to receive from it you can then move that operation of uh, calculating the coefficient uh, 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 right there right inside there so let me just move it right here remove that and then basically say um, 1200 time the coefficient and then you can return that but then uh, the, the the main the main idea there is yeah of of course that's not gonna work this way you have a different API and then you return something like that which means that whoever who wants to use the calculate method like you're gonna see that calculate method start to deal with also a then a catch and finally and so on and so forth and that's the moment that's the moment a sync await comes in and says okay you know what um, we will allow you to write this thing in line and resolve things literally uh, where um, uh, where they're supposed to be. So here I made a, a quick uh, mistake here, but it's supposed to be uh, data here and we can uh, simply say uh, that thing's gonna be a number and so on and so forth. But that's not the point right here. It was indeed um, the, the uh, uh, data that we should use here and that data will indeed come from from this uh, 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 operation there. Okay, so now, where is async await uh, f uh, 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 comes in here? Async await says, well, keep your code in a, uh, uh, like, b uh, top bottom. Like when you read it, you just really go from top bottom. The then and order, um, the, the, the then and finally and catch will give you still a, a kind of top bottom approach but it's mostly l left to right right the, the the flow of the data so what a single way does it says okay let's go back here give you a bit of space here we're gonna make that function async and then right here we're gonna then have the coefficient which is gonna come here as a weight and from that point on we could simply get this and put it right here and return that this way right and then and uh, the data the coefficient that comes from here we said t -t 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 -t, type the the coefficient right and right here the 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 value of this should be indeed whatever we pass uh, there so let me put it at thousand so that we could we could check that in the browser and then uh, see that it's actually working oh probably the browser doesn't handle a single weight i'm not sure we're gonna check that in a few seconds so let me remove uh, typescript related things so that we can run that in a browser so let's copy this and then go in our browser here we're gonna clean that up and then uh, run this okay that works really well and then if we take our calculate uh, 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 method here we can uh, do this it seems to work pretty well and then if we do calculate uh, total and we do this yeah of, of course it's going to say that there is this uh, thing happening there but you can clearly see that right now yeah, the async await uh, will it 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 will just make sure that yeah you see here it returns your promises there so we don't write.
promise in a way right there but a async await will give you in this that same api of like then like look at it here i can go with then it will give you that then thing but it for for a lot of people using it in line like this is a better api than uh, start dealing with the then catch and so on so forth right so in this video which i hoped was shorter i just went from having a, a value that is instantly returned to showing you how we went from there to a sync await and how you can leverage that in your code these are just fundamental knowledge right and um, it's not nothing really uh, 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 special here beside the fact that these uh, understanding this will just follow you the rest of your javascript life right so that that was that was it so i'm gonna make a quick video uh, soon how i show you how to refactor that code because you know what that code is ugly and i will see you on the next video don't forget to subscribe just go on Hackages Lab. They have a, we have a lot of a snippet of videos like that where we explain fundamental things in the JavaScript ecosystem. You take care. Cheers.